Today, we're going to show the basic process of choosing and building parts for an affordable gaming computer for well under 1K. When selecting your parts, PC Parts Picker is one of the best tools to use. This free web tool allows you to build a virtual PC while filtering for compatibility issues and part values. We've gone ahead and laid out a selection of our personal picks for a powerful and affordable gaming computer. However, we encourage you to do your own research and select the parts that best fit you and your budget. After your parts have arrived in the mail, you are ready to begin assembling your computer. For this build, we'll be using an i5 4690K processor, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo CPU Cooler, MSI's Z97 PCMate motherboard, two sticks of G-Skill 4GB DDR3 RAM, a refurbished EVGA GTX 970, a 600 watt power supply, a 1 terabyte hard disk drive, a standard CD drive, the deep cool Tesseract mid tower case, and Windows 10. If any of your parts defer from ours, we ask that you refer to your installation manuals as you follow along. The tools you'll need is a regular Phillips head screwdriver, a precision screwdriver, and any type of thermal paste. As a minor warning before starting this build, we recommend that you assemble the computer on a solid, flat surface that is not carpet due to the possibility of static damaging the components. We will begin this build by installing the power supply. After unpacking the power supply from the box and unscrewing the case panel, place the power supply into the back corner of the case. Orient the power supply such that the switch is facing out and the fan is facing toward the bottom of the case. Finally, screw in the four corners of the power supply from the outside of the case. Next, we will prepare the motherboard for installation. First, take the motherboard out of its packaging and lay it on a clean surface. Remove the handle that holds the CPU frame down and open the frame. Next, we will insert the CPU into the slot we just opened. While handling the CPU, make sure to hold the CPU on its sides to avoid damaging the sensitive pins. Carefully place the CPU inside the frame. One corner of the CPU will have a small indentation indicating the direction it should be seated. Close the CPU frame and pull the bar down under the clip. You will have to use some force to close the frame entirely, which will ensure the CPU is held in firmly. Next, we will install the heatsink onto the motherboard. If you are using a different heatsink or the stock heatsink that comes with the processor, then please refer to your installation manual as you follow along. Begin by placing the heatsink plate on the underside of the motherboard directly below the CPU, using the provided nuts to secure it in place. This will make sure your heatsink stays on the motherboard. If you have a stock cooler, you do not need to perform this step. Next, apply your thermal paste to the center of the CPU. You'll need to squeeze out enough to cover the area of a dime. Place the heatsink on top of the CPU, making sure the arrows of the fan are facing the rear ports. After the heatsink makes contact with the CPU, do not lift the heatsink, as this can introduce air bubbles into the thermal paste. Finally, screw the heatsink in using the provided adjustable socket. Once the CPU and heatsink are attached to the motherboard, we can install the motherboard into the case. First, prepare the case by attaching the metal back panel that came with the motherboard. After laying the case on its side, place the back panel in the back. Afterwards, place the motherboard inside. Make sure the back ports are facing towards the opening in the back of the case. Finally, screw in the motherboard into the six holes as shown. Next, we will install the RAM. Before inserting the RAM, make sure the indent on the chip matches the bump on the RAM slot. The slots in which the RAM sticks are placed in do not matter, as long as both sticks go into the same colored slot. Place one corner of the stick in the first, and push the other side down, until you hear a click. Next, we will install the graphics card onto the motherboard. In order to seat the graphics card properly, you will need to remove the two back plates through which the graphics card will stick out of. For this case specifically, bend the plates back and forth until they come off. You will need to remove the second two plates from the top. To install the graphics card, lower the card into the slot closest to the CPU and firmly press down. You should hear an audible click as you seat the graphics card firmly into its slot. Using the provided screw, attach the GPU to the case via the back plate slot. Next, we will install the hard drive. Begin by removing one of the drive bays and placing the hard drive in. Make sure the pins of the bay match with the slots on the hard drive. Finally, place the hard drive back into its slot. Now, we'll install the CD drive. First, remove the side panels of the case. 
and then the front panel. On the front panel, bend the flaps of the wire mesh outward and push on the slot to remove it. On the case, flip the plastic switches of the CD drive slot to the right. Push the CD drive into the slot and flip the switches back to secure the drive. Finally, secure the front panel back onto the case. To conclude the assembly, we'll connect the various wires that we've been setting aside. To prevent any major wire cluttering, make sure you run the wires through the back of the case instead of running them over the hardware. Please refer to your installation manual as wiring will vary greatly from build to build. To assist your installation, we'll give a brief overview of some of the wires we've come across. To begin, the wires that come out of the power supply are there to provide power for your computer. The wire currently shown is the motherboard power cable. This is the GPU power cable. This wire is the USB 3.0 cable that should be connected to the motherboard to utilize the speed increases of USB 3.0. The SATA cable connects your hard drive, CD drive, and any other peripherals to your motherboard. Along with the SATA cable, the SATA power cable is often required for most SATA devices. Thank you for following along with our tutorial, and we hope you enjoy gaming on your new, cost-efficient computer.